In this tutorial, we're going to examine how to use Google Calendar to manage appointments and events in your life. The first stage is that you need to create a Gmail account. Now, this tutorial doesn't show you how to create a Gmail account, but if you see the link below, you can click on that. It'll take you to a video on how to create a Gmail account. And once you've done that, you can come back and view this tutorial. Once you've created your Gmail account, you're going to log in, and here we see our Gmail window. From there, we can click on Calendar to access our Google Calendar. Now, we can also go to calendar.google.com to do the same thing. Now, we're looking at the weekly view here. We can also have a daily view, a four-day view, and a month view. And in this case, we're going to do most of our work in the month view. Now, before we get going on creating events, I want to be able to organize my calendar and divide it into the various aspects of my life. So, I'm going to click on Create here, and I'm going to create one called Personal. I'm just going to create that calendar, and then I'm going to create another calendar and I'm going to call it EC. And we'll call that extracurricular. Create that. And I'm going to create one more. And So one of the powerful things with Google Calendar is that we can separate the various aspects of our lives into different calendars and turn those on and off at will. We can also, let's just say here that we're going to go with blue for personal, and then maybe because we're Chinook employees, we're going to go with some sort of gold or orange here for work. All right. So we can change the color of our calendars as well and the manner in which they display. So having said that, creating an event is just this difficult. So let's say that we had a professional development day on the 5th of October. We're going to click on that and we're going to go 9 a.m. Now. Google will be able to parse this as long as we put the time first and as long as we always use at to indicate the location, it will actually parse that for us. We're going to drop this down and we're going to say that that's part of our work schedule and create that event. So it says 9 p.m. PD day at Swift Current Comprehensive High School. If we click on that event and we go to edit event details, we see here's the event, here's the time. By default, uh, Google Calendar always puts an event to one hour. We can change that, of course. So if we want to, we can say, no, I'm going to be busy till 3.30 on that day. And you'll notice here that it has put the where as SCCHS, just as we typed it in. Now we save that. It now has the appropriate length. Now let's say on the 11th we're going to say that at 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. we have the family dinner at home this one we'll attribute to our personal life, create that event, and there it is. Notice that it's color-coded according to the colors that we've selected for our calendars here. Now we can also turn off our work calendar or turn off our personal calendar 
and then turn those back on at will. So if we want to display just one or the other, we can do that very easily. It's also possible to create repeated events. Let's say that we had a staff meeting on every third Monday. So we're going to click on the 19th here. And we're just going to say 3.30 p.m. Once again, we're going to attribute that to our work calendar. And we're going to click on Edit Event Details here. Let's say maybe it goes to 5. And we're going to put that it repeats monthly. So now we have the choice. Is it monthly on day 19 or is it by day of the week? And we're going to say day of the week. And it says monthly on the third Monday. That's what we wanted. Let's say that it repeats until, and we'll just advance our calendar here to June. We'll pick June 30th. And where? And you can add a description and so on. In this case, we're going to save that. And now we see that as we advance through the months, the third Monday has our staff meeting on it. Now let's say that the 18th here is the last day for school on December. So we're going to have our staff meeting on the second Monday that day. We just grab this and drag it up. And it changes that one. Now let's see, we'll go back to November. It's still on the third Monday. So it's only changed that one event for us. It hasn't changed the rest. So we can alter repeated events in that way. So those are some of the basics of entering events in Google Calendar.